Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric and today I'm coming to you from the inside of a spooky cave to talk about this week's episode of WWE Smackdown. Uh, that's episode 1064 and 205 Live, episode 163, both broadcast on January 10th, 2020. So, uh, starting right off the bat, uh, Ms. TV with special guest John Morrison. John Morrison is back. Uh, he was anticipating just coming back for the, uh, like making his debut at the Royal Rumble, but he explains he saw that his friend, the Miz, was in trouble, was having a hard time, and decided to step in to help his pal. Um, they talked some trash about the New Day, also talked some trash about some audience members, uh, including a turd cutter. Which is such a gross thing to call somebody. But, um. <laughs> is that. Uh, that is that saying that they're. A, okay. Is that referring to somebody having a hobby of doing that to turds? Like with, uh, like with a knife of some kind? Or. Is it, uh. A silly way of calling somebody a, a butthole? Because those also turds but anyway uh the new day come out uh and kofi challenges well we end up with kofi versus the miz with biggie and john morrison on commentary um they get involved uh with the match a little bit as biggie was about to um well he was he was there at ringside talking some trash and stuff when uh john morrison comes over jumps on and hits a cannonball flip whatever you call that move which is super awesome and the Miz was able to win with the skull crushing finale um, so next week we're going to have John Morrison's in ring return uh, as he faces Big E and I think we might we just might see uh, um, uh, th this tag team match at the Royal Rumble for the tag team championships, um, I saw some discussion online with that uh, with that idea in mind, and uh, people were saying, "But th then they can't be in the rumble; they got to be in the rumble." Well, we've also established in this episode that Roman Reigns accepted uh, or offered a challenge to Baron Corbin to fight him in a singles match, and then also they would both be in the Royal Rumble, and they they were both okay with that. So it's not. Uh, unprecedented on this card alone for uh, tag teams to have a match and then also be in the Royal Rumble. We could have like a preview of some of the crazy stuff that uh, Kofi and John especially do um, in that tag team match and then have them go another level higher than that in the Royal Rumble itself. Um so we had a quick uh, a quick episode of Firefly Hun Fu Firefly Funhouse where Bray Wyatt says I love you to everybody watching but not everyone is worthy of love the fiend feels the opposite about Daniel Bryan because he's been real freaking naughty That's right real freaking naughty I was hoping that <laughs> the note changes there would have been a little bit more dramatic. But anyway, um, he, he says goodbye and that I love you, but not you, Daniel. Uh, Sonia Deville backstage hypes up Mandy Rose. But first, uh, Mandy has to take care of something. She has a big box to deliver. And that box is for Otis Dozovic. Dozovic. Do Otis. He doesn't have a last name right now. Um, it's an I'm sorry cake. It says I'm sorry on it. And she says that she's sorry for uh, what happened to his, his the, the fruitcake that his mom made. Um, Eli Elias comes out. Um, he sings about Raw mostly. I don't know if he's saying anything about SmackDown. He's just talking trash about Raw, about Lana and Lashley and all that kind of weird stuff. And the whole... Uh, Seth Rollins and business with the, the AOP and everything. I think he mentioned them. I'm not sure. But uh, then we had Mandy Rose versus Alexa Bliss. Uh, Sonya distracted uh, distracted Alexa for a second, but it was unsuccessful um, as she uh, 
at, um, as Mandy then went after Nikki, who was trying to counterbalance balance that and all that. But it was Otis coming out with the cake, very excited, had his tongue going wild for it. That uh, Alexa was like, "What the what the hell is going on?" And Mandy rolled her up for the win. I'm starting to get goosebumps in the spooky cave here, but. Um, <clears throat> Lacey uh, was supposed to fight Sasha Banks, but Sasha didn't show up because she had to go finish her rap album in Los Angeles or whatever. So uh, Lacey challenges Bailey, who is backstage, delivering that news to Lacey. And uh, she says, well, I'm not going to fight either. And so Lacey goes after her and attacks her in the backstage area. That's in that's their, fi- their location in space, not the part of Bailey that was attacked in the backstage area her butt she got her butt kicked anyway uh, Daniel Bryan uh, talks about how the fiend doesn't like what he that he can't break him that he can't break Daniel Bryan um, then the uh, rambling rabbit comes on the screen and he wants to share his secret with Daniel Bryan how to defeat the fiend but Bray Wyatt appears Snitches get stitches, he says. And a few minutes later, Daniel Bryan opens up uh, a bag or whatever to find that. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dismembered? A disfigured? A, a, a murdered rambling rabbit? Pretty gross. Like his head is smashed in. There's blood all over it. And no puppets had blood. But uh, yeah, it's a clear message that, well, that there is. Why would why would he why would he kill Ramblin' Rabbit if he wasn't offering some type of truth? So there is some way to defeat the fiend, but unfortunately, because Ramblin' Rabbit is dead, he might be the only one who knows what that what that what that strategy is. Then we had Ron Strowman versus Shinsuke Nakamura. It is a non-title match. Of course, we had Sami Zayn and Cesaro at ringside. Um, but Braun Strowman wins via power slam, and uh, he holds up the Intercontinental Championship as if to say, this is going to be mine soon. But like a split second after he, he finishes raising it up, Sami Zayn jumps in from behind and yoinks it away and gets going. So that was pretty fun. Um, I don't know. I'm just trying something different uh, being in the spooky cave. Um, so far, I haven't had any uh, stalactites or stalagmites dripping on me. So that's been it's been good. I'm staying dry in here. It might be raining outside. I don't know. It, it wasn't raining when I came inside the, stirpy, st- the, the, the sp- spooky cave. Anyway, um, Seamus brags about uh, shutting up Shorty G and then uh, also the Daniel Bryan thing. That's right. I skipped ahead for that. Uh, Roman enters uh, the arena. He introduces the Usos. Uh, Usos say dog food was disrespectful to our whole family. Um, Like I said, Roman Reigns accepted a match with Baron Corbin at Royal Rumble in addition to the Rumble itself. And uh, during the match, okay, so we had the Usos versus Dolph Ziggler and uh, Baron Corbin, or King Corbin. I apologize. So sorry, King. Um, The Revival came out uh, as a distraction, but Roman came out right after they did and punched punched both of them right in the face. Um, At one point, Roman spears Corbin, resulting in disqualification because tensions keep rising and rising. And then Bobby Roode returns, Robert Roode. Sorry, sorry, Robert. Um, Robert Roode attacks. Um, he hits a, a hits Roman with a spine buster into the uh, announce desk, but it doesn't break, and so they get uh, Roman back up on there. And Dolph Ziggler hits him with a big elbow drop and busts through that announce table. And it looked pretty painful. I feel I feel bad for Roman for <laughs> having to go through the table twice, um, especially because the first time didn't give away as it usually does 
Um, and that was this episode of SmackDown. Um, I personally am most excited about the uh, John Morrison stuff, um, but also the the Mandy and Otis romance. This is a lot more um, palatable than the uh, uh, romance storylines going, or I mean, there's only one going on over on, on Raw, so we won't talk about that anymore. Oh, bug just flew into my into my mouth. I like cough it out. There are a few bugs here in the in, in the spooky cave. So uh, then we have uh, two hundred five live episode one hundred and sixty three. Um, like I said, um, I didn't take extensive notes on this. Um, just what matches happened. Um, it was uh, initially Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Leo Rush, but the Singh brothers interrupted as they were filming their film. <laughs> Whatever they were working on, they I don't I don't know what they're doing. They're they're weird. But um, <laughs> I was just thinking again how Tom Phillips was explaining last week why you could see the camera lens in the shot that was supposed to be from the camera. Anyway, um, uh, this episode Tom Phillips is not there because he was on his way over to the UK for NXT Takeover Blackpool too. I'm really really excited for that. But um, so we had Aiden English and Byron Saxton on commentary, and they're 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 pretty good to listen to. I enjoy them. I don't know why, while well, either of these guys, why they aren't the third man on SmackDown or Raw, and uh, well, it seems like they've kind of they they've kind of naturally settled into two man teams, um, except for NXT which has uh, NXT has uh, three and then uh, main events usually has three as well with uh, Mickey James on there. And of course, Beth Phoenix over on NXT. But um, yeah, I guess that's kind of interesting. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe two, they've realized that two is the sweet spot. Although I haven't like seen anybody online. Usually everybody's like complaining. Why do they have three? They should go to two men and blah, 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 blah. Or two people, whatever. And now that the, all the shows are two people, basically, I haven't seen anybody mention that at all. Like, this is what you've been asking for for the last three years. And now all the shows have just two guys on commentary. Be happy about it, I guess. But um, anyway... Uh, we had, uh, yeah, so this, it turned into, uh, Leo Rush and Swerve versus the Singh brothers. And of course the Singh brothers lost. They had a cool, really cool combination. I don't know the name of Swerve's uh, finisher where he like basically drop kicks the back of their head. Um, but, uh, they, they combined their finishers. I think it was the final hour followed by that. And it was pretty slick. And uh, that's pretty exciting for them. Uh, Ari Devari uh, beat up a local guy called Jeff Jeff Brooks or Jeff Brook, no S. Um, and so that happened. And then we had the 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 t- two hundred five live debut of mm, gorgeous Prince Pretty Tyler Breeze, and he also has a new haircut. It's looking pretty good. Um, this was a fun match. Um, I enjoyed it, and uh, Tyler Breeze won be a, like a reversal roll-up type of thing and that was pretty exciting tony niece was not happy about that at all um also uh drake maverick invited jack gallagher to, to return from his suspension as long as he's ready to act like a gentleman and over on twitter uh throughout today i'm recording this the next day on saturday uh jack gallagher said well i'm, I'm gonna take my time then because he said whenever he's ready. And then uh, he said, if I'm going to return, I have some demands. And among those demands were a purple and orange, uh, two purple and orange buses to transport all of the 205 Live roster. Um, I think that was my favorite one. And also, uh, I think it was to have Exhibit present the buses to them. So that was a pretty fun idea. Um, also, uh, he he wanted a specific theme song. I don't I don't remember what it was. He also wanted uh, Drake Maverick to go back to wearing a nice suit and look like an actual general manager instead of wearing his weird green jacket that he probably got for free. Um, 
and uh, there's something about, I think it was bourbon, having some bourbon available whenever he has a match or something like that. Something something really classy like that. I don't know if bourbon is classy. I think it is. I don't know. I've never had it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited for Jack Gallagher to come back, especially if he comes back to fight Drake Maverick. That would be pretty fun. Um, also, um, oh, I thought that he was wanting to enter in the Royal Rumble because I only saw, like, number three or something like that. And I thought, oh, he wants the number three spot. Interesting. But I, it would be fun to see Jack Gallagher in the Royal Rumble again. Um, who else would be? It? And the whole thing with people suggesting that Drake Maverick should be the number two entry to face Brock Lesnar in the first minutes of the match. That's still happening. Lots of people still tweeting about it and people talking about it on like WWE backstage and all, all kinds of stuff. So that's been pretty fun. It would be hilarious if he did. I tweeted I, in response to that. I said, you should just hide under the ring Hornswoggle. And then I added to it with Hornswoggle with the, the little correction asterisk there and a couple of people liked that tweet I don't know if Drake Maverick saw it if he did he didn't like it both literally and uh, digitally so or for sure if he if he saw it he did not like it digitally I don't know if he didn't like it literally but anyway um, <clears throat> yeah that's about it I'm going to get out of this spooky cave here now that uh, I'm done talking about Smackdown and uh, 205 Live um, for the second day in a row I've failed to go see actually third day in a row I've failed to go see um, 1917 uh, tomorrow might be the day tomorrow evening I don't know or maybe I'll go tonight if there's still tickets available um, till still seats available but I am really excited to see that film I've heard it's really really good and now that it's finally in a theater near me I can go see it hopefully very soon so i'll be talking about that real soon um i my uh comics episode for this week is coming soon i want to read as many as i can first um so that's been taking a little while i've only read one out of like the 15 that i picked up or so well, i didn't pick up that many It was maybe like 10 but um stay tuned for that and then of course i'll be talking about takeover blackpool 2 that's going to be great. So um, let me know what you thought about this episode by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe out there in all of the infinite multiverses. And I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. See ya.